cinema history, The Deathly Hallows is spectacular, gripping, jaw-dropping. In cinemas now. Welcome back, and straight into one of the 50 moments Harry Potter would rather forget. His first meeting with the Dark Lord, Voldemort. They are the two most powerful wizards on Earth, and yet somewhere deep inside us we know, right from the first time that Voldemort's name is mentioned, or not mentioned, that this series can only end with Voldemort and Harry going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I can touch you. There's a really disturbing tone underneath it all. Come on now, Harry, the niceties must be observed. Dumbledore wouldn't want you to forget your manners, would he? I said, bum! In a part like this, I think you try to find that lethal sort of, I'm kind of quite sadistic in yours, where you, where you can. That a boy, Harry! Your parents would be proud. Especially your filthy muggle mother. In Rafe's performance, there is a kind of visceral energy to it that um, that is that is genuinely intimidating, and, and means that you you kind of feel compelled to fight back and give as good as you're getting. Have it your way. <laughs> Those were. Tricky scenes to film because I'd never really done fight scenes quite like that before. Well, at the age I was at the time, about 15 years old, you know, Ray Fiennes was suitably intimidating that a lot of it, there was no acting required on certain occasions. I'm going to kill you, Harry Potter. I'm going to destroy you. Back with the dreadful Dursleys again. But here, they can hold Harry back no longer, thanks to the arrival of a tall, dark, oddly handsome stranger. Make a wish, Harry. Sorry about that. There's loads of magical, massive moments in Harry Potter, but the best one is the simplest one. His transition from an 11-year-old boy without a hope or a dream in the world to it being revealed, you're a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard, and a thumping good one, I'd wager, once you trade up a little. It's part of universal wish fulfillment. It's not just for children, it's for you know, all of us would like to have been taken aside and told we're on this special path. Did you ever make anything happen? Anything you couldn't explain when you were angry or, or scared? And particularly to be told by someone so benign, this monstrous, terrifying, brutal, but gentle and loving creature. Uh, who wouldn't want to have that happen to them? OK, I'm going to have to look away now because it's a bit all about moi. The You have to be trained up a bit, of course. I can't think of anyone else playing Hagrid other than Robbie. He is Hagrid. Yeah, fantastic casting. Mad and hairy? You wouldn't be talking about me now, would you? No. The person I really stood out for and kept banging on about to the point that Chris Columbus said, yes, yes, of course, we'll have him in, was uh, Robbie Coltrane for Hagrid. I could not have borne any other actor to play Hagrid. Professor Dumbledore, sir. It wasn't Harry. Uh, Hagrid. In fact, I'd be prepared to swear it in front of the Ministry of Magic. Hagrid! And that's what Hagrid represents. He's the squidgy, benevolent way in which Harry will get there. And uh, I think a lot of people identify with that. Hagrid! Oh, hello. Sorry, don't wish to be rude, but I'm in no fit state to entertain today. We know about the Philosopher's Stone! Oh. He's perfect as Hagrid. Uh, what's odd is when people come to the set and kids come who know every punctuation mark of the books and every frame of the previous films. And when they see Robbie, he's not that big, quite frankly. 
He's not a giant. And they're enormously disappointed by him. He can never satisfy any of the children who meet him because they're not looking up that far. J.K. Rowling said, I envisaged Robbie Coltrane the whole time I was writing this and he gets the part. And that just means these films were meant to happen and they're perfect. Quidditch is just genius. Come fly with me, let's fly. Our next moment isn't so much a moment as a sport, except that it's not real, I think. It's basically, you've got a ball, you've got to try and get it through one of the three different size hoops. Um, I think the smaller the hoop, the higher the score. Then there's this funny little flying thing that's going around. If you grab hold of that, you're laughing because your one hand's down. That's 150 points. It's quite a, a very intense game, and I'd, lo I'd love it if it was real. I think that'd be a, a wicked sport to play. I would really have loved to have played Quidditch. I'm, I, I'm, I'm quite big into sport myself anyway, and I... I just kind of think it looks like the best game ever. It's got the snitch! Isn't that clever? Little thing like that. That's where she's uh, J.K. Rowling is so clever. Little touch like that. Platform nine and three quarters. King's Cross Station, London. Sorry. One of the busiest train stations in the world and a terrible place to get lost, especially if you're looking for a platform that doesn't exist. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me where I might find platform nine and three quarters? Nine and three quarters? Think you're being funny, do you? Same every year. Packed you? with muggles, of course. Come on. Muggles. Platform nine Three quarters this way. And platform nine and three quarters was, you know, has been pretty much the most poignant moment for me throughout the movies because it was my first ever moment on a film set and I'll never ever forget it. When you're young, you know, your age is always so important. And I remember being exactly nine and three quarters of age on platform nine and three quarters. Fred, you next. He's not Fred, I am. Honestly, woman, you call yourself our mother. Oh, I'm sorry, George. We actually ran at the wall. I think if you if you didn't know what was going on, you're looking at it from down the other way, you'd think, how crazy are you guys? I'm only joking. I am Fred. It's a good scene because we had to kind of run at full speed at this brick wall and kind of just stop just before we hit it. Excuse me. Could could you tell me how to how to get onto the platform? <laughs> it's not to worry, dear. It's Ron's first time to Hogwarts as well. Now, all you've got to do is walk straight at the wall between platforms 9 and 10. Best do it at a bit of a run if you're nervous. Good luck. I love the fact that platform 9 and 3 quarters has now become this place that every fan of Harry Potter has to go. We, as a nation, have taken it to heart. It's wonderful. Meet everyone's favourite ginger rebels. It's Ron's older brothers, the Weasley twins. They embody everything the Weasleys are, are, are really about, I think. Mischievous and, uh, you know, tearaways and always cracking a joke. But it's for this act of pyrotechnical rebellion that we most fondly remember Fred and George. Yes, I like to see horrible people get in a comeuppance, and she was horrible. Dolores is just vile, isn't she? I think it's like, how, it how many times would you want to do that to your own school? And I think Especially that's... the teacher, what no one likes, to have a firework dragon just engulf her and rip all the rules down off the wall. Oh, 